Class Action is a production of iHeartRadio and Sound Argument. I went to Catholic school my whole life. It's meaningful in this in the sense that I told Sister Grace a few days ago that I wasn't quite sure why God brought me to St. Mary's. And this year has been very special in the sense that not only mock trial has showed me that that's why I'm here because of this team, this AJ and, and Coach Goss, they're all so phenomenal at what they do. But I definitely think it was God's way of bringing me back to my religion. Hi, I'm Ariel Encinas. So I'm helping with the flowers. We just set up the masks. I set up the candles, the volunteer stuff. The judges will get roped and be ready. So we're just kind of preparing last minute things. This morning I was at work and I had to finish up numbering all the banners to make sure that they were all ready. And just the finishing touches, that's about it. So the Red Mass is an ancient tradition that started back in like 1245 in Paris. And it basically marks the beginning of the academic and the judicial year. And it's a way for us to pray for the the administration of justice that's going to occur in this next judicial year. Red Mass at St. Mary's is a huge deal. You're going to get your banner. You're going to process in. Are you a representative? Candle cards! Catholic Lawyers Guild of San Antonio, St. Mary's University Law Alumni, Hispanic Law, Roses in Memoriam. So everybody in the legal organizations, the different courts in San Antonio and in Bear County, they all come in with a banner. So like the San Antonio Bar, San Antonio Chapter of the Federal Bar, San Antonio Young Lawyers Association, San Antonio's Mexican Bar Association, Each legal organization has their own representative, and that's been pretty neat to see how excited they are for Red Mass. We asked one of our deans to hold the mace in the beginning, and she was like, I've always wanted to do it. Like, I'm so excited. President Tom Engler, Marianists, Sister Grace, thank you for making a special this celebration of the Mass as we pray to the Holy Spirit to make of all of us, all of us, servant leaders. The purpose of this Red Mass is clear enough. It invokes God's guidance and strength during the court term to come. Our wearing of the liturgical red signifies the willingness to defend the truth inspired by the Holy Spirit. And for the nation, also human law may hopefully preserve us from anarchy. It is not enough to bind up our country's wounds. And we know it. And not only the country, the state, our city. Just a few weeks after the start of the fall semester, the first big national trial competition, the Battle of the Experts, is about to get underway. I'm Katie Fang. This is Class Action. The Battle of the Experts, Episode 4. With the COVID-19 Delta variant sweeping through college campuses, this will be a virtual competition. A quick summary. The case is, let's say, very similar to the murder depicted in the movie Goodfellas. This case file is the prosecution of the Joe Pesci character uh, for all intents and purposes. So, 
the fact pattern in this mock case. Billy Caffiero, a made member of the mafia, is beaten in a Pennsylvania bar and then later stabbed to death and buried. Prosecutors accused Joe Pesci, I mean, Tommy Santasuso, of murder in the first degree. I am a, a huge mob movie, mob TV show fan. My name is Phil Pascarello. I'm the tournament director for the Battle of the Experts. On the other side of the case, we've got uh, the bartender who was in the bar that night and heard the insult. And we've got a mafia expert who's going to say, this murder just doesn't really add up as it relates to the rules of the mafia. It doesn't seem like the government story makes a whole lot of sense. It's the first tournament of the season. I wanted my school and this tournament to be opening day. I am really excited to be at the coaches meeting with all the coaches and say, welcome to the 2021-2022 season. All the directors and coaches and students are junkies for this. They love this stuff. These are the 16 teams in no particular order. Baylor Law School, Quinnipiac Law, Chicago Kent Law, Pace, American, Nova Southeastern, South Carolina, St. Mary's, Temple, South Dakota, UCLA, UC Berkeley, Stetson, Pacific McGeorge, Cumberland, and University of Illinois Chicago, John Marshall. Why are you looking at, what, what are you doing? Oh, I was seeing, oh, were you asking me? I thought no, that was, she was asking Houdini. That was everybody, and everybody everybody was there. St. Mary's mock trial team is wide awake, over-caffeinated, in fact. They're hunkered down at a hotel in San Antonio and are operating on very little sleep. Coach Jason Goss fills them in on what happened at the tournament's coaches meeting last night. Here's the deal, power pairing. So this is power paired every round, except for the first round. The first round was a challenge round, which we actually didn't get challenged, which you know what that means? They're scared of us. Nobody wanted to be. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) 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 The opportunity to do it, nobody wanted it. So we ended up being just the last ones left. Nobody challenged, and so that's exciting. That's cool. You know, that's cool because you had like the UCLA's in the world and everybody else. UCLA, Temple, Baylor, those are the perennial mock trial powerhouses. St. Mary's ranks near the middle of the pack, but this is a new season, and upsets can happen. Trial team captain Andy Vizcarra and Jasmine Olguin are the team's top guns. There's a lot going on today. And we didn't have backdrops last year, and Cole and Mariela are like brand spanking new to this. Jasmine's like freaking out. <laughs> Jasmine, I need you to get into defense mode like you did last night. For real? No, Andy, I'm here for you because you're doing the most right now. <laughs> okay, it's fine. <laughs> Which one is it? Why is no one answering my question? No, it's right here, Andy. 106. Okay. What team is 106? Outstanding. Uh, oh, wait, sorry, they sent me a script. Let me make sure I use their script. The judge is already logged in and waiting. I'm apparently supposed to say hi to everyone. We're waiting on a few people to get started. I haven't heard from the defense yet. From the defense? Good morning, Your Honor. Were you waiting on us? Yep. Yes, Your Honor. We are both here. We're ready to proceed. Round one, St. Mary's University versus the University of Illinois, Chicago. Everyone is here, and we just received the message to get started. Uh, my name is, or so let's call the case of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania B. Thomas Santasuso. My name is Judge Mark Altman. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Anna Rose Velasco, and today I'm here with my co-counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. I am Carol Tercoli, and we are representing the prosecution. Okay. Good. Yes. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Andy Vizcarra, and I, along with my co-counsel, Ms. Jasmine Olguin, represent the defendant, Mr. Thomas Santosuso, in today's proceedings. Defending any homicide suspect is the top of the game in criminal law. It'll take years for Andy and Jasmine to gain enough experience to take on this kind of legal work in the real world. But you gotta start somewhere, and why not, in mock trial. Andy comes out swinging in the pretrial making sure the rights of Tommy Santasuso are not trampled by an overzealous prosecutor. 
Yes, Your Honor, we previously stipulated that no nicknames will be used to describe any of the parties today. So no nicknames like Tommy Two Guns Santa Suso or Crazy Tommy. Trials like you're on fire, everything around you's on fire, people are throwing fire at you, but our coaches teach us how to like put those out. And lastly, our motion would be to exclude Mr. Santasuso's criminal record in today's proceedings as uh, they are past acts or wrongs. And it should be excluded in today's proceedings. So like something's coming at you, you like move. That's coming at you, move. But it's all happening at the same time. I'm going to grant the motion in limine. Uh, if you can lay the proper predicate to get into that, then it's go with it. But until then, uh, no mention of his prior involvement. Father. Yes, sir. So you kind of feel like you're in the matrix. And it's really, really cool once you get in it. At first, when they throw you in there, you're like, I'm going to die. Everything is lit up and I'm going to burn here. And then you kind of get taught how to like put out the flames, which is cool. Some people were like, ah, that sounds amazing. Adrenaline rush. Other people were like, I'd like to be the administrative branch of this team that like just watches you people. And I was like, got it. That's okay. It's not for everyone. <laughs> All right. Uh, prosecution, why don't you go ahead and start your opening? It doesn't matter if you're in a gang or the mafia. It doesn't matter if you're... During the six-minute opening by the prosecution, Jasmine Olguin is taking notes and trying to get her mind right. First thing in the morning, I always do a prayer in the morning. I recently just lost a friend, best friend actually, and it was a really hard year for me. And I just really like relied on my faith this past year. It's been difficult in school. Like my friend, he actually asked me, he was like, do you ever like have doubts of your your faith and stuff? And I was like, no, like I have no doubts because some of the things that have happened to me, like when you're at the lowest, you're like, there's no coming up from this. Absolutely not. And God is just there. Like I've thought a lot about my faith recently too, because I don't want to just like be praying and saying the same things. I've been also trying to be more like real every time I pray and really be thoughtful about what I'm saying. Not just say the same, thank you for this, thank you for that. Like I always do, like I'm trying to be more like, I'm thankful that I'm doing my dream job that I've always wanted. Like things like that. Yes, Your Honor, may we proceed? You may. Some things are too good to be true. And today, the Commonwealth has brought before you something that looks like a present. But after today's case, we will unwrap that box and remove the nice little bow on the top. And you will see that that box is not a case. It's Nick Patrick, a liar, a drug dealer, and a murderer. It's a Tuesday afternoon on Pietro Lane. And as you're walking down the road, the smell of spaghetti is lingering in the air. And as you enter the first restaurant on your right, Tommy greets you. Tommy walks you over to the booth. He takes your order and he goes to the kitchen. He wants to make sure the chefs are following his mother's Sicilian recipes. Tommy, a few years ago, opened his dream authentic Italian restaurant, Santa Suso's. But Santa Suso's, it's more than just a restaurant. You also hear from Mac Ledesma. Mr. Ledesma is an expert in organized crime. He knows the way the mafia thinks. He knows the way the mafia works. And he will walk you through how a few insults, a few jokes, that's not a reason to kill somebody. But money, drugs, that's more than enough. And that all will link to Mr. Patrick. Today, you will see that the forensics the fingerprints, the DNA, and how it only links to one person, Mr. Patrick. The Commonwealth bears the burden to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Santasuso killed Mr. Cafiero. And they will not meet this burden today. We will ask that you return the only just verdict there is and find Mr. Santasuso not guilty. And right on cue, the prosecution calls Nick Patrick, its star witness, to the stand for his direct examination. Witnesses on direct are nearly always played by students of the same team. This Nick Patrick is about to break the code of silence and rat out Tommy Santasuso. 
What did you do next? I took Billy with me outside to go have a smoke. Um, we went outside, we walked up by the alley, we turned the corner, and then there was Tommy right there in front of us. What did the defendant do then? He, he started beating the piss out of Billy, punching him, throwing him to the ground, kicking him. At one point he got on top of him and then grabbed his head and was smashing it into the ground. Uh, Billy was bleeding real bad. And did you agree to help him get rid of the body? Well, yeah, what was I supposed to do? Getting people to flip is really the name of the game when it comes to the mob. That is how you're going to make your big cases. I got pretty good at it. My name is Ellie Honig. I spent 14 years as a prosecutor. Yes, they literally swear a blood oath when they become members of the mob and they swear to omerta, which is the Italian word for silence. That said, they will flip. If you charge them with a murder and they're looking at life behind bars, they'll flip. If they've had a falling out with the family, if they've been, here's a term, shelved, meaning sort of suspended without pay, they'll flip. If they have a beef going with somebody else, another term there, a dispute, they will flip. So the biggest and best cases I made were based on cooperation, on flipping people and getting them to break through that code of silence, that code of loyalty. So the mob presence looms large at these cases, and it really can either help or hurt the prosecution or the defense. So you're a witness, counsel. Mr. Patrick, how old are your kids? Excuse me? Your kids, they're still young. Yes. And they've grown up in this world of the mafia that you... Yeah, I'd love to hear those relevant, too. Yes, Your Honor. This line of questioning, if we may be heard outside the presence of the jury. Sure. I normally don't back down from an objection, like which is half the game in trial. Like, you cannot be rattled. Be argumentative, because, you know, your client's going to jail. Do it. And let them worry about it. If they're going to object or not, like, just punch it. This line of questioning is relevant as Mr. Patrick has a big deal to testify for the Commonwealth in today's case. Now, part of that deal is that he and his family get witness protection. They get relocated to a new place to start their life far away from the mafia. The relevance of this line of questioning is testing Mr. Patrick's motive to testify on the stand today, and as such as testing his bias and his credibility, which is always relevant. Um, is it true that Mr. Patrick is receiving witness protection for both himself and his family? He is, but I still wouldn't understand the age of his children having anything to do with this or anything along that lines. Your Honor, I can respond if, if you need me to. Sure. Yes, Your Honor, the point of the age of his children is just to show that Mr. Patrick still has young children and they've grown up in the world of the mafia. So a part of this deal is that his young children no longer have to grow up in the world of the mafia. And it goes to his deal today to testify for the Commonwealth in exchange for that witness protection for him and his family. Again, Your Honor, it goes to his motive to testify on the stand, to his bias as a witness and his credibility, which is always relevant. May I respond, Your Honor? It's a stretch, but I'm gonna overrule the objection. The Commonwealth, in their cooperation agreement with you, offered you and your family witness protection. If I attest that truthfully, correct. Now, I want to talk to you about June 11th, 2019. Now, you exited the bar with Billy Cafiero that night, right? Yes. And you went out into the alley? Yes, both me and Billy. And you loaded Mr. Cafiero's body into the trunk of your car? Correct. It was your car and not Mr. Santasuso's where Billy's bloody body was. Correct, it was wrapped, but yes. So part of your cooperation agreement with the Commonwealth is not that you were an accomplice to the murder of Billy Cafiero? Is that your testimony today? No, that, that's correct. And as an accomplice, you would agree with me that you were part of... It is not enough to be learned jurists and skilled practitioners your people need understanding and love. The wounds and the suffering is deep. What then does this demand of you? A return to the biblical vision of justice. Show us, show the people in society that there is another way to serve. 
Your commitment to God's justice makes demands on you. It is not enough to be incorrupt, to go to your people with clean hands. Those hands must be outstretched. We'll be right back after the break. While the St. Mary's team is scoring points with the judges, up north, the squad from the University of South Dakota yeah. is getting hyped. Thank you for getting here. I'm glad you're, you know, present and awake. I made breakfast. Did you have your nap? This morning? <laughs> I, I'm sure you did. Okay, <laughs> these are law students, not football players. I'm sure you did. Well, I guess it's eight hours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> do we need to make sure that you have a smoothie? <laughs> That'd be nice. Sorry, Here's the deal. So. As of 1030, the moment you speak to another competitor, you can no longer talk to me until the round is concluded. For Coach Laura Rose, the battle of the experts is the first chance to finally get her team into the win column. Her school is ranked dead last among all of the tournament's competitors. What I expect to happen this morning is for them to see a very intelligent, very well-prepared and well-coached Berkeley team. I think that the evidentiary arguments are gonna be on point. If Bailey stays calm and remembers that she does actually know what she's talking about, we'll be fine. You've got this. Bailey, stand firm on your knowledge, right? Stand firm on your preparation. Don't worry about the individual components of it right now. You know how to flow with this. Stressing yourself out isn't gonna do you any favors. You're a monster. Get in there and destroy people, guys. Blood makes the grass grow. Like, I'm not kidding, it's, it's, it's time. Y'all have put in the work, you're ready for it. Everything else is just gravy at this point. It's just complete nerves and jitters for me, at least. I'm Bailey Moravec, and I am a third year law student. Justin and I are arguing first today, and I think that we're so ready, we've got our case prepared, but these past couple days, it's been like just the most anticipation I think I've ever <laughs> felt in law school. Round one, South Dakota versus UC Berkeley. All right, everybody's here. We just received the message to get started. Let's call the case of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania versus Thomas uh, Santasusa. All right. And defense counsel, would you like to make appearances for the record? Yes. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Bailey Moravec, along with my co-counsel. Justin, turn your finger back around there. My name is Justin Peterite, co-counsel for the defense. All right. Thank you. Um, we will now hear... <laughs> These uh, children, I swear. Are, I don't know if you're more nervous or I'm more nervous. This is the first group of students to be trained in the, quote, Laura Rose system. And they've been taught to be more assertive in pretrial motions, to not give away any advantage. Okay, the Commonwealth has six to address. So first, Your Honor, we ask that all witnesses be constructively sworn in and sequestered per Rule 603. Is the opposing counsel okay with that? Bailey, say no. Come on, girl. Your Honor, we were under the impression that all witnesses will be present for the testimony of other witnesses, especially for the experts. There you go, good girl. Um, Your Honor, it's stipulated too that all witnesses will be present for other witnesses' testimony, so we ask that they all be present, so therefore we disagree to sequestration. Okay. They've already thrown them. <laughs> They've already thrown them. Burden of proof? Well, it's called proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And there are three things today that the Commonwealth must prove to you all beyond a reasonable doubt. First, they must prove to you that William Cafiero is dead. Over the next two hours, the South Dakota team does their level best to stick to the evidence and to avoid the histrionics usually associated with defense attorneys. Second, they must prove to you that Thomas Santasuso was the one who killed William Cafiero. And lastly, they must prove that Thomas Santasuso acted with the intent to kill William Cafiero. As I just said, this is a case about opportunity, obvious misses and desired outcomes. And in order to show that today, the Commonwealth is going to present you with two witnesses. You're going to meet Sergeant Roche. You see, Sergeant Roche is the overeager yet misguided investigator. And then you'll meet their star witness. Cross-examination? Come on, Justin. Yes, Your Honor. Do your shit, do your shit. <clears throat> Ms. Patrick, you just testified on direct examination that Tommy Santasuso was boosting trucks after Billy's incarceration. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. I did. I think that most people can have like a voice in the courtroom. They just got to kind of find what that is. I would say I'm pretty direct. I would like I don't get very flowery. Like I know Rose, like she likes the fairy tale style themes for something, and that's not me. It would sound goofy if I was talking about Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. People would be like, "What's wrong with this guy?" This wasn't the first time that you've attested to this. Uh, no, I think I said the same thing in the preliminary hearing. That's what I knew. That there sounds right. To be honest with you, it was there a long you go, time Justin, ago. There you go. There you go. Fuck yes. Yeah. So he just destroyed her credibility well. completely and totally, yeah, and now he gets so. into his planned questioning. Then he went away. That was as smooth as it could uh, be. Yeah, God, that's good. Down. And South Dakota is up against a team with a much different style, more outgoing, more theatrical. At the heart of his murder was membership, money, and money. Oh, you're on paper still. First, membership. And See her looking down, so it's, it's, she's got membership. notes somewhere. Billy Cathiero made a mockery of the defendant. This stage shit is like, this drives me nuts. A defense witness who you'll hear from today, they were kept close, given money Excuse me? favors, all in the hopes of producing loyalty to the battalions. This theater stuff that you see leaking in, it gets attention, it but it's not litigating. Time. It's not being a lawyer. We just, we just sit there for a few seconds. I just heard some criticism in your voice about the theatricality that seems to be, it sounds like maybe more infused these days in terms of the mock trial competitions. I teach my students that trial is theater. I, I teach my students that jurors and even judges are looking for some level of having their attention captured through the theatrics of what that trial is and what the facts are, et cetera. Am I wrong in that regard? No, I don't think I don't think it's wrong to say that we steal from the art form of theater all the time as trial lawyers. You have to in order to present, in order to know when to use the softer tone of your voice to really, in an opening statement, get the members of the jury to have that moment where all of a sudden their empathy is engaged and they're listening to you at a different level. I teach all of those tricks too, but what I come back to at the end of the day is juries want that theater, but juries are roving bands of 12-year-old girls. And what I mean by that is they will spot the fake person like that, and when they spot the fake person, they're done with you. It doesn't matter how compelling you are. It doesn't matter how great of an orator you are. If they think that you're fake and full of it, they're not going to reward you at the end of the day because they're going to feel lied to. But it's not about making them into an actor. It's about teaching them the tricks from acting and teaching them the tricks from theater in order to do the presentation in the most authentic way that they can. Because at the end of the day, that's what juries end up rewarding. But you and I both know anybody can be an advocate, but not everybody can be a trial lawyer. Are you thinking about how they're going to end up as lawyers and whether or not they're going to be competitive trial lawyers and really be able to make a mark that way? I am much more concerned with building competitive lawyers than I am with building competitive trial teamers. You get four competitions if you're lucky, right? You get four times to compete at, an, at a mock trial competition in law school, maybe six if you really push it at some schools, right? If you do three a year, you have the rest of your professional career that you're going to go out and be representing people. And so I'm much more concerned with making good attorneys, coming. <laughs> Back in San Antonio, the pace of the trial is heating up. So let me get this straight. You heard the defendant say in three separate statements that he was going to kill Billy, correct? Correct. The rookie, Mariela Encinas, is thrown into the fire as a witness. And in another room, her teammates are listening, ready to bail her out. So as we sit here today, you have absolutely no idea about anything Tommy did after he left the bar, correct? No. You agree it's possible he never left at all? I mean, it could be possible, yes. I saw him leave the bar with his wife, so that's... And you didn't see him again that night? No, I didn't. Because the only way you would know if he had come back that night is if he had 
physically re-entered the bamboo lounge, correct? So yes. When I actually took was closing up, I was able to see a little bit outside, and that was the extent to what I could see outside. So as we sit here today, you have absolutely no idea about anything Tommy did after he left the bar, correct? No. Objection, Your Honor. Asked and answered. Response. We have no further questions, Your Honor. When the experts are called, the trial moves into open warfare, with lawyers trying to crush the credibility of the other side's witness. Hello, my name is Matt Ledesma. This Mac Ledesma is portrayed by St. Mary's Cole Davila. Business has been hired 18 times before to do this, correct? Yes. So 17 out of the 18 times that your business has been hired to consult, it's been hired by mobsters, correct? It's been hired by alleged mobster, uh, mobsters and their defense counsel. You did not speak with Nick Patrick? No. Now, you believe Nick's statements to the police were truthful, correct? I'm sorry. I'm Partially. so sorry. Um, so you believe... Nick's Objection, statement? Your Honor, if I may. Yeah, I'm going to say that dog don't run. Sometimes all of this high-speed action results in a misfire. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, Sorry, did I hear objection? Yes, Your Honor. Objection to the the uh, Commonwealth saying that my client got an attorney. What's your objection? Uh, My objection is withdrawn. Okay. Overruled. But the mark of a sharp attorney is a quick recovery. Let's talk about your investigation on Billy's murder. You collected evidence in this case. Yes, we did. And one of the evidence that you collected was the interview of Mr. Patrick, the written report. Yes, we we interviewed Mr. Patrick. But we don't have that audio of the interview today. No. We don't have it because your police department lost it. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. As the trial heads to break, Andy Vizcarra, the team captain, checks in with her co-counsel. Dude, I forgot my last block. I know, I know. Was it that bad? Yeah, you don't go off screen. I mean, it's not that bad. The cross was good, but like, be confident in yourself. Like, you knew that you walked over, stopped for like two minutes to ask one question. I know, I just couldn't remember my question. It's okay, if you don't remember, end it on that. It's okay. Like you clearly were going off screen. No, you didn't fail. It was a good, it was a good cross. Yes, I'm sure. But don't, but be confident in yourself. Like you know this material. I just like blame. I know. I like could not remember my last block. Just take a breath and just like, take a moment. Like you're okay, everything's okay. Like, it was a really good cross. You got, we got everything we needed. I know. It's fine. We're okay. fine. You're just fine. promise I didn't let you down. No, I, you didn't let me down. <sighs> you can't dwell on it for too long because, like, we have a job to do. And it's like, you can't sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Like, just keep going. Like, you have to keep going. And you have to remember that, like, confidence is half of the game. Because you're not being, you don't believe in yourself. And like, I can't do it for you. Like sometimes like you like get down and you like let it like go into you. And then you're like, "Mm," and you hesitate. And the next question is the right question. Like, you know this stuff. And I'm just like, like, you got it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Like, just hit it. Like use sarcasm. Like all of your questions are your questions, but like your tone of voice and how you're asking them are gonna convey more than what you're actually saying. We all got confidence issues. We all got confidence issues. You ready for this lead direct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Put the phone down. You're not crying. You're fine. Lawyers don't cry. Let's go. I need you to hype up. No. We got this. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah. We got everything. Yeah. This, we got this, this is the easy part. This is the easy part. So get we off the practice. Yes. Let's go. Okay, is our uh, our team back? If I can get all the attorneys to pop up on screen for just a second. 
Your Honor, counsel, members of the jury. Earlier today, my co-counsel, Bailey Moravec, told us this case would come down to an opportunity, obvious misses, and a desired outcome. The teams are ready for closing arguments, and the pressure is on to impress the judges one last time. In South Dakota, that job falls to Justin. And now the Commonwealth comes before us today and asks you to give them their desired outcome, an outcome that they haven't quite earned. Then we also heard from the defense's expert, Mr. Mac Ledesma. Ledesma, who spent years in the FBI, has investigated many, many organized criminals, pointed out a few things that didn't make sense. The few things that didn't make sense, like the circumstances and suspects that were never investigated. Let's talk about some of those circumstances. The first one being. You can't get the technology to work. The timing of the death. There we go. There we go, Justin. There's my boy. Was There's my boy. Extremely close to the timing of the release from There's prison. There's my guy. Uh, potential violations of the mafia that could nice have led cover. to a sanctioned killing. A sanctioned killing is when the blessing comes down. In San Antonio, it's Andy's turn to close out the case. Yes, Your Honor. May we proceed? You may. Some things are too good to be true. But the Commonwealth thinks they have their slam dunk conviction. Why does anything else matter? It matters because they have the wrong guy. It matters because the real killer is sitting in the wrong chair. It matters because in the United States of America, no one is above the law and no one is beneath it either. It means that no matter who you are, president, priest, prostitute, or even former mafia member, the law protects you until the Commonwealth, until the state can prove otherwise. Mr. Patrick thinks that because he delivered this perfect present of a case to you today, no one will look too hard at him. Pay attention to the red flashing lights pulsing in front of you. There is more evidence in this case that Nick Patrick... Defense counsel, you've run out of time. Yes, Your Honor. Any rebuttal in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Brief rebuttal. Members of the jury, the defense that... I could have cut it. I could have cut it. I'm sorry. That was supposed to be a perfect close. I should have just put it. I believe my ballot has been perfect. That was really good, though. It wasn't perfect. After the end of the round, the presiding judge and the jurors tally up their points. They mark a range of scores for the quality of the openings and the closings, as well as the effectiveness of the direct and cross examinations. Judges could just drop an acknowledgement in the chat or give me a shout. To let me know when their ballot has been submitted. I can confirm with the back office that it has been received. How do you feel? I feel good. There are parts of it that could have been smoother. There are parts of it where they could have argued a little bit more, but they used their time judiciously. They pointed out the things that they needed to point out. I would have liked Justin to point out the impeachments that we got in the close a little bit more, but I think he attacked the credibility of the witnesses just fine, in particular since he had that moment. Oh, I had to do our comments. Let's just prepare judges. Let's just go in alphabetical order. As for the defense, I would say that the cadence of the closing made it difficult to follow what was and what was not important within your arguments. Aside from that, like I said before, big job. <laughs> that was a tone of voice critique. Justin's going to be so mad. Both teams did well, but uh, I would caution the prosecution to be less theatrical. And for the defense, I would say pick your energy up a little bit more, um, especially if you get stuck at a point. It seemed like at some points, both sides may have been doing some reading, um, which is OK uh, in my view, because you don't have to memorize every single fact of your case in order to be effective. Yes, sir. You okay? I'm fine. I just lost all my shit. I couldn't find my stuff, like my with my PowerPoint. Yeah. So I was trying to find it. I just lost it. That's okay. That's kind of what happened there. 
Close. But that, it wasn't a terrible close. It wasn't a terrible close. Justin, you did exactly what you needed to do. You walked him through the elements. You walked him through where they didn't have proof. You did exactly what I would have wanted you to do. I know. You so, handled it. It's like that, that should have been 10 times better than it was, but. Yeah, but you were going up against the world's most boring, over theatrical, like, non existent real world team no, ever. True. Like, true. that got. Like, <laughs> you, sir. I did exactly what I would have wanted you to do. Stop beating yourself up and stop my name right quarterbacking it. You handled that round expertly, Justin. You really did. But you, you gotta shake it off, shake off the shake off the bad vibes rings. I'm telling you, you handled that. The fact that that closer was as scripted as he was and was as reading as much as he was. I'm not meaning this as any kind of insult to Berkeley because that's a way that they can choose to coach, but this stuff drives me nuts. I can't stand pre-planned gestures where it's been clear that they've been told what mark to hit with it. And they were clearly reading both their opening and their closing. And their opening was long as hell. It was like 10 minutes long. It was ridiculous. Your theory is way better on the state case. That's the stuff that we discarded about a month ago now at this point was, was what they went with. You guys are better prepared. You just have to stay focused. In San Antonio, the mood is tense as they wait for comments. This Wi-Fi better start working before I throw a tantrum. Hey guys, I'm gonna keep my comments as short as possible, no matter how much I love the sound of my own voice, because I know you all are probably hungry as I am. Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, guys, look, here's the deal. If I were to have pulled with the all did motions late today, I, I would have been shouted out of the courtroom. Um, if you are going to file a request a motion in limine, you better make sure it matters. You better make sure it's not a complete waste of everyone's time. And if you violate your emotion, you're through. You have to be able to adjust. And um, I mean, to be honest, the running out of time part is actually a far less of concern for me than that. I'm going to sort of piggyback on that comment. T to me, this felt pretty sloppy for a trial at this level. Um, going over time, not listening to the rulings on motions and objections, not having a backup plan if you lose on a particular line of questioning and just sort of like dropping it. And I just feel like at this level, you know, you got to look at the score sheet and you got to see what we're evaluating you on. This, this is an overall performance kind of competition, overall performance kind of score sheet. There's no part of the score sheet for me to give you bonus points for making motions and limine and objections that didn't advance your case in the end. You thought we were sloppy. How are we sloppy? I don't know. I thought you did good. Maybe it was me on my cross. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm really sorry about the running out of time. No, it's fine. No, it's not fine. If I let you down, I'm sorry. Oh. After one long day of competition, the St. Mary's team, despite the harsh comments from the judges, beat the University of Illinois Chicago. They lost their next trial to Chicago Kent. The team piles into Andy's car, trying to clear their heads. Why do you have a Kingston dress in your back? Because my sister had her Kingston recently and I've been trying to get this to the dry cleaners, but I've been forgetting because I'm running around like a crazy person, Kristen. <laughs> I wonder what judge it was that complained. It was like our main judge. No, the coach. coach. Okay. I don't want to talk about that anymore. I'm, I'm done. Don't... I'm like, I'm gonna be pissed if this one guy carried his whole team. Like, is that a joke? Like, yeah, he was good. He was also reading. Everyone needs to calm down. Uh... It's heartbreaking. We worked so hard for this, and oh, we still got two rounds. I mean, we we got two rounds, right? Yeah, like no, today's right. rounds were like. They're okay. Definitely could do better tomorrow. Like, and your opening was so good. Like, I'm just like, I don't know. We do need to hit it harder. I just don't know how else to. I'm gonna cut my cross and brow. I'm only gonna, like, I'm gonna make it tight like that guy did. Maybe you I just know. need to be like, was there no fingerprints? No? All right, cool. Next. Yeah. On the no knife? Was there anything on the knife? Just keep going. Like, okay. Just keep Just do going. those blocks. I'm gonna just be like, I'm gonna just cut like, out the investigation block at the beginning. The rest of the blocks are tight. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You're right. We know what we need to do. It's gonna be good. I might hope my kids can never do mock trials. 
Nice. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you taking your bag, right? Yes. Oh. More from class action after the break. South Dakota is also one and one. They lost to UC Berkeley, but Coach Rose doesn't tell her team it scores during the tournament. We spilled the beans to Bailey after the competition. I haven't even seen the scorecard, so did they beat us in both of those rounds? Sorry, but yeah, they did. You're kidding. Oh, that is such a bummer and kind of funny that they won. I remember the acting that came from it. It just seemed fake. And then there was a lot of smiling, which I didn't understand because it was, you know, a murder trial. I remember being shocked during it and just being like, what are we going up against right now? I think they were polished. I'll give them that. Like they knew their facts. They knew the fact pattern. It was polished. You could tell they had prepared, but they didn't prepare in the way that South Dakota had prepared. So it shocks me that they won. But then they rallied and beat the highly ranked University of South Carolina team. You didn't include a lot of the evidence that corroborates Nick Patrick's story. Right. Because you didn't include the defendant's cell phone record. Uh, No, I did not. You didn't include anything about the autopsy report. No, I didn't. Did that feel better? Everybody feel a little better now? Right? That was so good. Here's the difference. You feel better this afternoon because you chased down the tracks when they left them chased down and trackable. You guys were nervous about that because of time this morning. Don't worry about that tomorrow. You know your arguments. You know your positions. You know where you're going to go. Y'all handled that, and you ate the puppies without embarrassing them so badly that they felt like they were shamed. That closing, sir. Hot damn. Hot damn. Braden, you did that first part of the close in like nine minutes, just so you know. Y'all are great. I'm super duper proud of today. You should be super duper proud of today. You, sir. That witness. (laughs) Would it refresh your recollection if I pointed you right to it and then she took forever? You're like, I'll do it for you. I was like, Bill, yes. Like, all day long, twice on Sunday. Everybody had moments of real advocacy brilliance today. So I called my parents between rounds. So right after I argued, they've gotten very invested in this. They obviously, you know, know about the case. So they know that it was a murder trial. And then I made the joke to Rose yesterday. I was like, well, I want to send my parents the link, but I don't think they know how to change their name on (laughs) on Zoom. (laughs) So I'm going to have to teach them how to do that. So my wife looks at it as a student organization, and she does not understand why there's a podcast following us for our student organization. She doesn't understand why there's a camera set up for a student organization. She doesn't understand why we have to compete in competitions for a student organization. She just compares it to like the nursing club in undergrad. She's like, I was in whatever club in undergrad and we never had to do any of that. Why are you doing all this? This takes up so much time. You don't need to be doing that. Breathe, go home, rest. We're gonna try our case tomorrow. We're gonna handle our shit. We're gonna do the same thing all over again, okay? Breathing. Go forth, do good things. Any questions that you need to ask me? Do we know who we got tomorrow? I don't know yet. It'll, it'll be a while before they, they announce. And as soon as I have the pairing, you'll have the pairing. He looks to the trunk. They count one, two, three. The trunk pops open and the spotlight of the trunk shines on the victim of this case. Mr. William Caffiero, sprawled out, bruised, swollen, limp, and using what little life he has left to plead for help. Day two was a letdown for South Dakota. They lost a battle against Cumberland. Again, news to Bailey. After the round, Justin and I went into one of the study rooms at school, and he goes, God, that was brutal. And I was like, Bill and Brayden just slammed them. And it was impeaching. It was correcting them on the record. It was all of this stuff. And yeah, wow. That's all I have to say. (laughs) And then exhaustion creeped in and they lost a top-ranked Baylor. Good luck in the next rounds, everybody. Good luck, everybody. You know, it was just tears because you put in 
so much work. You have your school's name behind you representing them. So it was almost worse than a sports loss. And it was worse because there were definitely rounds that we should not have lost that we did lose. And that doesn't necessarily happen in sports. (laughs) So that was very, very, very tough. And to just kind of feel like we didn't do enough or like we've disappointed you know, USD or, and, you know, and I know that that is not the case. There's just stuff you can't control, but you do take it personally. And I definitely did. Well, we're going to have to know who we go against because we're going to have to email them. Uh, Jasmine wants to know who we're going to go against. And I'm like, well, I just rather not know because it doesn't matter. I want to know we're if we're going prosecution or defense first. Oh, well, yeah, I want to know that too. But Jasmine's out here like trying to scout people. Well, I don't know <laughs> anything except UCLA and Baylor, but still. At St. Mary's, the unforced errors continue for Jason Goss's team. He and his wife, Maritza, can only watch and shake their heads. Isn't it weird? So Andy got Andy got a 10, a 9, and a 6 on her closing. It's every, but every round. A 10, a 9, and a 6. Every round she's had somebody give her a 6. What did Jasmine get on her opening? She got an 8, a 5, and a 9. And the five so came from weird. the same person who gave Andy a six. So that is a judge that just... Did not like us. From the beginning. From the beginning. Head coach A.J. Belito de Luna has been following the tournament all weekend. So what, what do you think is going on? I don't know. I don't know. I think that they were rattled from the beginning. You know, shouldn't trust us. Yeah. So she, that's their bad. <laughs> so and that's going to affect the jury. That's I, right. Yeah, and I, I just don't understand that though because we don't practice that way. So why are they? Why is this happening now? We'll be right back after the break. St. Mary's is trounced by Temple University and completely run out of gas against Pace University in New York. The St. Mary's team piles into a car and heads to Frida, a restaurant owned by Andy's parents. Cole, you might want to sit on the inside so the coach Stewart and coach Goss can sit here, and then AJ can have a seat if he wants to come. Do you want to serve a drink? Oh, oh, no, yes. Yeah, can I get a tamarind margarita? (laughs) That actually sounds really good. What are you getting? What are you getting? Margarita de tamarindo. I think overall, I'm proud of us. I think if we don't break, because substantially, substantively we were there, but also like we gave it our all and we have to learn from our procedural mistakes next time. And it's okay, this is our, you know, this is the very first one. I think I lucked out. I was really stressing playing Nick Patrick just this whole weekend. And luckily in both teams where we play, I played Nick Patrick, they didn't go hard, nearly as hard as I feel like we, we, we crossed, and so I feel like they really prepared me for what was to come, so yeah. I mean, that was my take from today. I, I can like breathe a little easier for now. On the one hand, happy that we made it through another day. Um, I was very tired, want to recover, but you know, we did so much work for two months, very, very late nights. I want to advance, even though it's going to be exhausting the next day, so we can say, you know, it was more worth it, but at the same time, even if we don't break, it was a great experience for my first uh, outing for law school. AJ stops by just in time to hear the announcement about which teams will move on. It's called Making the Break. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm great, thank you so much. Can I get uh, an old fashioned, please? That'd be great. Thank you. Hey everyone. Recording in progress. Welcome everyone to the 2021 Battle of the Experts uh, Award Ceremony. So I'm really pleased to announce that our first uh, presiding judge, outstanding presiding judge award goes to Jason Goss. Yay! Yay! <laughs> 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 
nice picture. How do I get your picture? Look at that picture. How old are you? I'm going to start uh, with our number one seed. Um, I work my way down to the number four seed, uh, uh, the four team that's advancing to the semifinals. So Start with our one seed. Uh, this team was the only uh, team to finish four full and two twelve rounds undefeated. Four and twelve. They won the two seed of their twelve ballots, and so they were uh, undefeated number oh one God. after our preliminary rounds. The only undefeated team. Okay. Our defending champion, UCLA. The, the next five semifinal team, our second seed, returning to the playoffs for the second straight year, Pacific Church. Oh, Congratulations. Oh, to the playoffs. And our last team made it in the playoffs this year. I just get in their teeth for the rest Point differential of plus 14, uh, three wins, eight balance. The Bears from Baylor. Congratulations, Baylor. So, tomorrow. It happens just like that. So we keep going. You pick up your chin, and we fight another day. Well, this feeling that you, you all have, I mean, you can see it, right? You're wearing it. You're wearing your feelings on your sleeves, right? You can see it. This is something that you can use as strength. You were not beaten this weekend. It was unforced errors. So the question is, how do you take this feeling and turn it into strength? How do you take this feeling and say, no, we're not going to do that again. We're better than that. Our coaches believe in us. We are better than that. How can we do this differently next time? We believe in you, and you're going to represent us in Best in Texas, the four of you. And Mariela, you're going to be an advocate. So all four of you, you're going to be a team, you're going to be an advocate, and you're going to show what we already know. It's okay. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? I'm good. How are you all doing? Good. Uh, I just told them that we didn't break into the semis. So. It's okay. It's okay. This is Andy's mom and dad. You want anything else in life? Yeah. Another step. But you got to see her. You got to see oh, her. yeah. It's very impressive what they do, honestly. But, um, yeah, it's very impressive to know, and it's very impressive what she can do. It's awesome. The whole experience is a prize. Sigue siendo una niña para nosotros, mi niña. Pero, pues, orgulloso de 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 ver la que que está cómo se realiza con profesionalmente, no. Entonces, es es muy halagante para como papá ver 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 la realización de los hijos, que es el sueño de todo papá. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of disappointing in the sense that. I did have a lot to prove. Yeah, we'll get them next time, but <laughs> hopefully I can eat now, so I'm gonna go. Oh. Yeah, or eat. Our people are crying for quality of love in law, in the exercise of your powerful profession. The trial season, real and mock, is underway. Prosecutors, defense attorneys, and judges from around the country are struggling with the weighty issues surrounding the administration of justice. The Red Mass dates back to the Magna Carta and the advent of jury trials. Our system is not perfect, but hopefully these young attorneys can make a bit of difference. Inspire them with your integrity. Give them what any man or woman can claim from the law, but give them even more, more. For your salvation and theirs, give them yourselves. Act toward them as God has act toward you. Who knows, you just might transform Texas into the kingdom of God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.
I always remind them, I'm like, this is what it's going to be, guys. This is it. You at least you have the community of being on a team with people who have similar experiences. You will be the only one. Every place that I have ever practiced, I have been the only one. On the defense side, DeAndre Bell. Also with 19 ranks. On the prosecution side, from Team Insidious, Dillard B, Amaya Ron. And finally, we had a perfect scoring attorney on the defense side, Dillard B, Lajene That's next time on Class Action. Class Action is a production of iHeartRadio and Sound Argument. Created, produced, written, and edited by Kevin Huffman and Lisa Gray. Additional story production by Jennifer Swan, Kristen Cabrera, Jason Foster, and Wendy Nardi. Executive producers are Taylor Shacoin and Katrina Norvell. Sound design, editing, and mixing by Evan Tyre and Taylor Shacoin. This episode had additional field production by Kristen Cabrera, Paul Ebsen, Alfredo De La Garza, and Malia Lukomsky. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your favorite shows.